All right, on this episode of the LPDS, we get into some lessons on patience and tactical patience and adapting and improvising and creating contingencies and all that good stuff that you want to learn about as an adult. And uh, we teach you here by learning the hard lessons on this end so that we could teach you the easy lessons on your end. Um, we also got some current events, pretty nice little cage fact. So it's all coming up right now. All right, Jabronis, we're back. Welcome back to the Libretti Podcast Diary Show. I'm your host, Libretti. Doing a little uh, day recording. And I don't have blackout curtains, so you can see on YouTube land behind me. Those curtains are all the way down. These blinds, curtains, whatever you call them. All the way down, and the sun's still getting through. I got to get some blackout curtains for here. I was thinking about getting like putting up a piece of plywood and painting it or something and then being able to put pictures and stuff on there and then being able to remove the plywood, you know, drop it down when I want to open the window or something like that. But just to explore the space, I got a lot of cool uh, pictures and artwork and stuff I want to spread out. And I also don't like this room is not very conducive of having uh all the stuff in it that I have in it and still making it a a good space for my office and studio and what have you. So that's why I got my desk here in this corner by this window. I don't really like having the window behind me when I'm recording, but so we're trying to figure it out. Anyway, hope everybody had a good week. Welcome to the show. Show about nothing that finds a lesson in everything. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. We have a hotline for the newbies. And also for the returning guests, uh, we have a hotline. Since nobody wants to call it except for three people, maybe. 202-670-1114. Call that hotline. You can ask a question, a hypothetical. Maybe you're asking for some dating advice or life advice or leadership advice or what have you. Um, maybe you have some feedback, a comment. Uh, maybe something happened in your life that you would want to, you just want to hear my opinion on. Send it 202 670 1114. It can remain anonymous. We don't have to identify you at all. You can make up a name, whatever you want to do. Let's just have some fun with it. It could be, a, it, it's a good time when people call in and we can respond and joke and laugh. And I'd like to get some, actually, the next time I get the creature on, a uh, recurring guest, next time I get him on, We'll we'll do a uh, we'll do a little like plan ahead where you guys can call in questions to the hotline or send the DMs you know on the Instagram to ask questions to the creature and get his take on life. And let me tell you something: you want to get the creature's take on life because it's it's always interesting takes. So stay that that'll be a good one. Hopefully, we can do that soon. Anyway. We finally got some rain here in Texas. It was about 20 minutes of rain. And it went right back to being 100 degrees immediately after it rained. Uh, but it was exciting. And it two things happened to me. Two feelings. First, excitement. Three feelings. First, excitement. Then immediate panic. Because I I was worried I was going to have another leak in my roof or something like that. And that's what I do these days now is until I'm rich, anytime there's adverse weather or anything, wind, rain, too much heat, whatever, I'm just immediately thinking uh, my house is going to collapse. There's going to be a flood and in my house and I'm going to drown or 
the heat is going to burn my place to the ground, whatever. I just, that's what it is until I'm rich and I can just buy someone to worry about that for me. Then that's what we got to do. Pay someone to worry about that, not buy someone. This isn't, this isn't the old times folks. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but I was excited and then the panic and then the realization that, uh, I got a pretty boring life, I guess, because rain excites me. And I would say I'm getting like my parents. But if you know me and you know my parents, especially my father, I've been pretty much my parents since I was like five years old, especially in the looks department. I am mini Super Mario, mini Mike Wazowski, mini Dr. Gru. So I don't, you could compare me to my parents now. I, the comparisons have always been there. So I don't, I don't subscribe to that as a new opinion, but yeah, I felt like that, that cutting realization of man, rain excites you. This is it. This is what adulthood is. So there's that. Um, I, we're going to switch over gears because we can't talk about the rain all day. That's that's crazy. Imagine I talked about the rain and how excited I was about 20 minutes of rain. I'd cancel the show on me. I'd cancel the show. I'd at the end of the rant, I'd apologize to all of you and then I'd cancel the show and be like this is that's it. That's all she wrote, folks. Sorry. But we're going to move on. Uh I want to give a congratulations to the New York Yankees for losing nine straight games for the first time since like 1982. That's how bad they are. They broke that streak by winning one game against the Nationals and then it f- immediately followed that by losing another game to the Nationals and losing the series to the Nationals who are also 10 games under 500 in the league. And I was I was having this conversation with the creature saying how it it hurts more that they're getting absolutely owned by these teams who are under 500 and they're bottom bottom feeding teams in in the league this year. And he was saying, "Well, that's what they are. That's what the Yankees are. They're a bottom feeding team." And he's right. But, but what hurts more is that they're the they're the worst of the worst. You could say the A's are the worst, statistically, maybe, and uh, record-wise, pro- probably. But when it comes to abilities, I say it's the Yankees, the team I'm a fan of, by the way. I say it's the Yankees because they're the, what hurts the most is that they're losing to all these loser teams. There's always one team at the bottom bottom that the other loser bottom feeding teams will will say, hey, you know, we'll be getting banged up this season, but hey, we're playing the Yankees. We're playing this team. We're playing that team. And at least we'll come away with a couple of victories this week, this series. That's the Yankees this year. The worst of the worst are getting shellacked by everybody. And then when they see the Yankees on the schedule, a three-game set, four-game set, two-game set, doesn't matter. They're like, oh, thank God we get a break from getting our shit pushed in. And we can uh, we can finally beat a team. And it's the Yankees every time. Because if you go look, I, I they haven't swept a team in God knows how long. They haven't won a series in God knows how long. They are the worst of the worst. You could say the A's are. The A's are the worst because their fans disappeared. Not that they had a lot of fans showing up when they were good anyway. But their fans disappeared because their team is selling out and they want to move to Vegas or whatever it is. The Yankees are the worst to watch. 
they don't they can't compete against anybody anybody there's only one and a half good players to watch right now which is Garrett Cole except when he's pitching against the Red Sox and the and the top half of Aaron Judge because he's still clearly limping around they're going to ruin that guy's foot and his ligament injury ruin him for his career just to keep throwing him out there to save face and 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 trick fans into still going to the games that's the thing i i still don't understand about it i'll 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 never understand it for this year as long as i i live is in 2023 how any self-respecting adult human being felt compelled to spend their time hours in New York traffic and spend their money, hundreds of dollars on tickets and food, and then spend hours to sit in the stadium to watch this team be an embarrassment. That's what I don't understand. And I don't want to say they're stupid because I I just don't I just don't want to believe that that many people 40,000 people a night are that stupid in that condensed space. Well, I'm a diehard fan. I got to support the team no matter what. Not like that, you don't. Okay, you can support the team in other ways by demanding accountability. You're not support. All you're doing, the team doesn't need support financially because that's all you're doing when you support the team by showing up to the game you're just supporting them financially they don't give a shit whether we're physically there or not the only the reason they would is because it makes them money or loses them money if we're not there or if we're not watching on on the yes network that's the only reason why they care so you showing up you're not supporting anything but their pockets their bank accounts which by the way are astronomically full right now. Somebody r- ran the numbies recently, and I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but something like the average, like the average profit for the MLB baseball team per year is around like 9% profits or something like that. I think that's what they said. The Yankees are averaging upwards of 50% profit. Now they have obviously a more worldwide reach. Everybody over across the, the entire globe knows the Yankees, so they can sell merch and hats and what have you is a lot, a lot better and you know, in a greater span than most other teams in baseball. But they're profiting upwards of fifty percent a year. That's unbelievable. So your dumbasses don't have to go support the team. Okay, you want to support the team. Stop showing up to these games. Stop wasting your time and your money showing up to these games to watch them suck it up and be an embarrassment to the league. That's the only way they're going to change. If we stop showing up, you want to support the team, that's how you do it, by demanding accountability, by showing them, if you keep putting out this horse crap of a team, and saying it's a baseball squad, we're not going to show up. Okay, you keep you. Your goal is to make as much money as possible. Our goal is to have a competitive team that's going to actually try to win World Series. There's a way we can have both, folks. If the team is good and actually competitive and not fake competitive, the fans will show. The money will show. Don't worry. But to be to put this slop out and people still show up and spend money, it's mind boggling to me. I don't understand that. Don't get it. They suck. I got to stop talking about them. I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. Anyway, speaking of fake problems, I just want to give a, another friendly reminder. In case you all forgot. That the election is coming up soon. The presidential election is coming up soon. Okay. 
You had the one of the Republican debates go on with a bunch of clowns up there lying through their teeth about who they are and what they stand for. Meanwhile, they're all secretly corporate funded already. And a bunch of windbags. Anyway, they were up there talking and it, and it reminded me too, the election is coming up next year, which means fake problems are going to start coming through the media again. And you could call me tinfoil hatty. You could call me kooky, crazy, stupid, whatever. This happens every four years. We called it last election. We called it the election before. I, I mean, the show wasn't around the election before, but the inner circle, the LPDS before, before it started, called it. Every four years is going to happen. So new variant of COVID. We already see people uh, on the... Uh, California and New York and those the standard places that had all those super lockdowns and restrictions, they're starting to do restrictions again. Some made-up variant is coming around to scare people. I'm sure there's going to be some sort of race-related chaos going on. Um, maybe some nation-state problems. China, North Korea, Russia... I mean, the Ukraine war is an obvious one. We got to kill, we got to fight Russia. So give us your money. Vote for me. I'm the only one who can help do this. Vote for me. I'll end the race problems, even though I'm the one who just created them. Vote for me. I'll I'll be the one who protects you through whatever uh, sickness and disease happens. Every time, folks, every four years, they remind us of of problems that aren't really as big a problem as they as as you know they make them seem. Now they're problems. There are problems going on in this country for sure. That's not what I'm saying, but they amp it up during election season to convince you that they're the ones who are going to save us from these problems. Yet every four years, the problems are still there in a big way, apparently. So, um, just a reminder, these people are crooks and criminals and liars, okay? Let's not get duped. Let's not keep voting people in like that that can't actually lead our country and bring us to prosperity. All they're going to do is continue to create chaos and division, and we need to come together. So, remember that. Um, I was thinking about and I probably shouldn't say this here because someone's going to steal my idea. They probably already have. I had a devious plan, not plan, but idea of how can LPDS profit off of this upcoming election and chaos and bullcrap. So I'm trying to figure out some funny shirt ideas to troll all the different sides of the aisle and just set up a couple different anonymous Etsy accounts or websites or whatever so I can sell each of them for different, you know, anti-Trump, anti-Biden, anti-this, anti-that guy, anti-RFK, anti-Abe Lincoln, whatever, so I can hit all the different teams out there that think they're more right than the other the other team and... uh and we can fund the program. We can fund the LPDS that way. So if you have any good ideas for shirts or something, let me know because we're selling. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, got some sad news in the world going on. Well, besides all the other crap that's going on, um, for the wrestling community, we lost Terry Funk, was an old wrestler. He passed away. And then shortly after, uh, Bray Wyatt passed away. That was his wrestling name. His name was Wyndham Rotunda. But he was Bray Wyatt. Um, he died of a heart attack. He was sick. I think he actually had COVID, but he had some heart issues. So it extended out his um, his recovery. And then he was set to come back to wrestle and then he had a heart attack passed away so that was that's tough for the wrestling community for those of you who don't follow you probably won't know who he is but 
for people like myself and, and of course the bone crusher, um, you know, we know who that is. So, um, and other sad news that more people will probably, uh, know about or know of is the guy who beat the crap out of happy Gilmore at the pro-am tour back in the nineties, Bob Barker passed away at 99. He also did a show called Price is Right, where he was the host of that show for like 35 years before retiring. Uh, and he passed away 99 years old. He took a spin on the wheel of life and missed 100 by just $1. So rest in power, Bob Barker, Bray Wyatt, and uh, Terry Funk. Terry Funk was also a wrestler. Again, the non wrestling community wouldn't know about that, but that's okay. Um, but sad news in that world. But that's all the current events we have. Um, so we'll get into the uh, into the good stuff here to lighten the mood a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we'll step into the cage. Okay, let's run. All right. Today's Into the Cage segment is proudly sponsored by Val Pack. Do you find yourself having the weekly urge to sift through dozens of coupons that offer you abysmal deals at local establishments? And do you want these useless coupons to be the only thing the USPS sends to you on time without losing it or being weeks late with the delivery? Then simply check your mail because whether you like it or not, a Val Pack envelope is sure to be there. From $1 discounts on roof repairs to buy one, get one free deals on condoms. Valpac has every deal you never wanted and will never stop showing up in your mailbox no matter how many times you call the post office to cancel them. So to get your Valpac today, just go check the mailbox. It'll be there in place of the tax refund check you've been waiting for for six months. The, uh, the ability for Valpac to ensure that you get their envelope every week or month or whatever their scheduled you know delivery is without fail is one of the most impressive things people will ever experience here in America without even understanding it, without knowing it. It's the only constant in this world right now, basically. You got... De what is it? Death and taxes, they say. The only two things, the only two guarantees in life, it's three things. It's death, taxes, and Valpac. The post, the post office has been an absolute... I don't even know what to call it. I'm thinking about 18 different shit talks in one. It's a, it's a dumpster fire. It's gutter trash. It's abysmal. It's the it's the worst run organization in this country since JPL two. My grandfather retired thirty something years ago. They filed for bankruptcy multiple times. They can't they can't deliver anything on time. Shit gets stolen on a regular basis, a lot of times by the employees. If you actually go to a post office, it's it's overrun by nincompoops. The place is abysmal. I've never I haven't I don't remember sending anything out or or having anything shipped by the post office in the last decade and having it either delivered on time or shipped to me on time ever in the last decade. I can't remember one time, but let me tell you the Val packs come every week without fail. You don't sign up for it. You just have to simply exist. 
And Valpac knows that you have a heartbeat and you have an address. And as long as you have those two things, you will get Valpac. And you'll sift through Valpac one time because you get excited. Hey, I got this envelope of deals. Wheeling and dealing over here in my home address, my new address. And you open it up and you sift through and you sift through and you sift through. 250 coupons in there, all for local establishments. How do they know which envelope to pack with what local deals? What kind of operation is Valpac running that nationwide? It looks like the same envelope nationwide, but you open your envelope and it is local establishments, local deals. So they have facilities all across the country stuffing envelopes with custom local coupons to send out regionally. And none of them, none of them are worth your effort to go to that establishment to validate or use that coupon. None of them. I haven't seen one Valpac coupon that is worth my time and effort to go to that store and buy that product for that deal. Now, for some people, maybe. I'm not trying to dog on people who it is valuable for. But I have to feel that Valpac would save an, an exorbitant amount of money by just sending those envelopes to the people who need them and and do this by having people sign up for the Valpac submissions or, or deliveries. You don't want Valpac? We'll cancel it. Valpac would save money. The people who don't want Valpac won't have to get Valpac anymore. The world would be a better place. The only thing I could think of is that Valpac is a front for something. And they have some sort of shady deal going on, maybe with the government, on how they're getting funded to be able to send every address, every beaten heart, an envelope every week. How do they get the money for that? How are they able to do this? Where is the money coming from? Who is funding Valpac? Homeless bums make tents and stuff sheets for mattresses with Valpac coupons. Tell me how this is possible. How is Valpac funding this operation? And how is this the only operation and envelope and coupon service and thing sent in the mail that gets delivered on time every time. I have never once in my entire existence on this earth never not got a Valpac weekly. They Valpac me in Afghanistan. We're taking grenades and mortar fire and diving away from shrapnel and frag over in a third world country. Taking, watching people take dumps outside in the dirt because they don't have running water. And then you know what they do? After they take their late night dumpies out in the middle of their yards... They wipe their ass with the Valpac coupons because that's the only thing that they also get delivered to them. They don't even have addresses on their buildings, on their compounds. It's just compound. And then compound next to other compound. And Valpac still finds a way to get them their envelopes full of coupons for halal 
and falafel and vests. And I'll never understand it. It is the the most efficient operation going on in this country. It's the best kept secret going on in this country. It might be it might be the biggest conspiracy going on in this country. Because it's all happening under our noses, really in front of our faces. We know it's happening, and nobody seems to ask any questions or give one shit about it. And who knows what's actually going on behind the envelope? All right, the cage fact. It was recently announced this week that the movie Jiu-Jitsu will be on Netflix. And I haven't checked personally yet to see if it's on there just yet, but I'm excited for that. If you don't know what Jiu-Jitsu is, one, shame on you. Two, it's a movie about an alien invasion that they have to save the day through martial arts. That's basically the premise of the movie, and Nick Cage is in it. So if if it's raining at your place in your area and you can't go outside and enjoy your day, your weekend or week or whatever, or if it's a school night, so you're staying in anyway, go check it out because I certainly will be. And that's the cage fact, folks. Quick one today. Uh, so we'll move it over to the junction. Spin the logo up. This was a week of tests for the LPDS. Okay. Dicking around my chair here. Sorry, folks. What I mean by that is a lot of little bullshit things went on this past week that normally in the, in the past would have completely incapacitated me mentally and emotionally Ruined my week, and I would have gotten nothing done. But I've been trying lately and working hard at at sort of refocusing my emotions and seeing obstacles as opportunities to adapt and learn and overcome as opposed to ruining my day or week or whatever or ending things. And we've discussed this in the past as seeing things as opportunities as opposed to dead ends and working on that. So I had a few of those this week. And again, they were frustrating. And I did get frustrated and annoyed in the moment. I'm not saying I'm not going to sit here and say I didn't. I'm I'm also not going to sit here and say I I faked it all. And I did the whole uh, serenity now to pretend that nothing was wrong. No, I was acutely aware of what was going on the negative impacts there and my emotional state and how it was annoying and frustrating and slowed me down in my progress in life. I had all the standard human emotions and feelings and what have you that anybody else has during these times of of strife, if you will. So I'm not sitting here going to pretend to, you know, to be like, Oh, I was able to overcome it. No problem. Or I just, just dismiss my notions altogether. No, that's not what happened. I'm a human being, damn it. Just like you, I am a you know a uh, victim of my emotions or whatever they're called, whatever you want to call it. Not victim of my emotions, product of my emotions. That's it. So I had you know anyway. I had a few of those. I had a I had to pause the video by the way for. Um, a technical difficulty, if you will. So I had a few of those that I had to deal with. And I wanted to talk about some of them to, sh- to vent about them, teach some lessons. Again, we learn the lessons here the hard way so that you guys don't have to. So that's what we, that's what we try to do here. 
Uh, and it started off, I had this whole plan. I had a lot to do this week outside of the house uh, for life and work and what have you. Um, so I wasn't going to have a lot of time to cook food or whatever. So I was like, I'll just crock pot a whole bunch of food and I'll have it for the week for myself, for big Randy over there. We'll get it taken care of. Well, my crock pot took a dump. First, it was blinking, the blinking light on the crock pot, suggesting some sort of overload of power, which I know is poppycock because it worked, you know, it's been working since I moved here. And I spent about, I don't know, an hour between trying different plugs, trying different reset options, looking up ways to get it fixed, and then uh, punching it to the point where I I thought I was going to break it in half or break my hand because I was so frustrated that it wasn't working when it was just working last week. Super frustrating. Um, but then I was able to cool off. I took a step back and realized that this damn thing was 14 years old. I've been using this on a regular basis, almost weekly basis for 14 straight years. Just about. I got this damn thing back in like 2010 when I first got stationed in Pensacola after college. And me and my roommates got a sweet deal on this crock pot and we used the hell out of it too. And then I just kept it for 14 years, like a like a jabroni. And I'm sitting here wondering why it's not working anymore. It's it's all it's over. All right. It did its it did its duty. And I finally realized that. So I was able to pop over to Target and get a new one. Same same crock pot, just obviously a newer version of the same model and everything. So we were able to adapt and overcome, and we got the food made for the week, and nobody went hungry. Um, and I was still able to go out and do and work on doing the other stuff I had to do. So, lesson number one don't punch your crock pot. Think about how old your crock pot is before you start beating it up and committing domestic violence on your crock pot. Realize it's probably old. It's not it's not their fault that they're not functioning as well anymore and it's probably time to retire them. And I could have saved a lot of time if I just realized that right off the bat, at least an hour of time. I could have went over to Target real quick, went came back, had the food in the pot already, no problem and um look, we learned the hard way. I didn't I didn't break any bones. The knuckles are still pretty Pretty intact. I got a couple of scratches. I was blasting that thing. I was blasting it to try to change the electronic, the circuitry in the crock pot to actually start working for me. And it was quick, quick jabs. Bam, bam. Turn on, bam. Ooh. It was stupid. Don't, do, don't do it. Don't do that. Okay. Um, then I had to go and get a new uh, government ID for my job. Common access card, they call it the CAC. And uh, insert any wiener joke here. I heard them all, okay? We have CACs in the military. So for the past 13 years, I've basically heard every common access card wiener joke you could possibly say and i'm actually looking forward to seeing if i get any comments on this via dm or text or youtube comment or uh, instagram comment or whatever because i i have a mental list of people who i am confident will respond with some joke so i'll keep you posted on that but i had to get a Government ID, a CAC for my uh, my job. 
there's an ID office about 30 minutes away. Now, it's not that far in the grand scheme of things, but 30 minutes there and back is 30 minutes there and back. That's an hour just to drive. And then depending on the situation, you could be there for a while waiting in line to get your card. And this particular facility does not do appointments. They do walk-ins only. So um, I show up in the morning one day, and they're they're busy. They're like, come back in the afternoon. We're not you're not gonna be able to go until after lunch. All right, cool. Um, I'm not gonna sit there because I have work to do. So I drive another 30 minutes back. So that's an hour, 10 minutes shot. Uh, I take another trip up there to find out that they got delayed from the morning crew of walk-in. So the morning crew became the afternoon crew. So no chance I'm going to get it done then. So another hour, 10 shot. That's just driving and getting nothing done there. The next four days in a row, I drive up there only one time and their camera is not functioning on the card machine to take your picture. And they can't use the picture that I have in the system for my military version of my government card to transfer over. It has to be a new picture, apparently. They So, can't make the card. And they didn't have any sort of information on when it will be fixed, when it will be replaced, how they're going to adapt and improvise and overcome to get this done. All they did was put a sign that says, camera is broken, come back later. Later. Now, I I did not get angry at the lady who was working there. She's a, She was an Army reservist. I wanted to. I wanted to Treat that person like my crockpot. This is how annoying and angering this lady was. Now, I'm not saying it because she is a lady. I certainly would never hit a woman for any reason. I know it's going to take, get taken out of context, whatever. But I was very much hoping that this person, this annoying, impatient, angry, rude person, was instead a crockpot for me to respond to I went into the I went into the office to inquire can you give me some more information besides this wretched sign this wretchedly communicated sign that just says come back later are you going to get a replacement camera is this one broken or is it just not responding with the system correctly can you give us do you have a timeline because you only allow walk-ins. And also, by the way, your phone number goes right to a voicemail. Nobody ever answers the phone. And the voicemail hasn't been updated for over a year. So clearly by calling, it's not going to get anything done. I have to actually physically drive up here to check. So if you could possibly give me some more information, anything at all, or if we can find a way to to make an additional government card for me using my current military card because the picture is in there, all the information is already in the system. You just need to change one ID code in the back of the card and everything else is the same. Can we do that? No, I can't do that. I have no information. Well, it'll get fixed when it gets fixed. We have no replacement. We're not going to go buy a replacement and we're not going to tell anybody unless they ask. And if they do ask, I'm going to get frustrated about it because I've answered this question 55 times already this week. If you don't see what's frustrating and annoying by that, then I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you need to sign up for Spearhead Leadership to get some leadership guidance and mentorship because that is not the way you provide any sort of communication or customer service or, or any sort of information of any kind. Not only were they not being transparent and open about the problem to let people know, communicate out to the people who drove there for these blind walk-in apartments, appointments, excuse me. 
they didn't create any sort of contingency plan. They didn't update any, they, they don't answer their phone. So there's no additional form of communication for the, for the people to get this information from. And when people do the obvious thing and ask the human being there, the only person who has this information, she responds rudely and angrily as if God forbid she has to provide this. How dare we ask her? Why would we ask? She left a sign written in marker, taped to the window of the door. How dare we ask her? And now I have to reapply for my ID because there is an expiration date on the forms once they get approved. You only have a certain time window to get this approved. So I have to reapply, get that approved, and then I have to play the guessing game on if that damn card reader is going to be active. And if the lady behind there, behind the card reader, is going to be amenable to making an ID for me. So that was frustrating. And instead of burning that place to the ground, I took it as an opportunity to go find a new place to eat up in that area or explore the, the region up in that, that part of town. I was also able to identify some stuff I needed to do for work, for the business, really, not work, for the business. So that was helpful. And then part of my job, I need to have some sort of temporary access to classified systems to look at secret information um, because we still kind of work with the government and the government has secrets. We all know that. And I have a security clearance for that reason. Um, so I've been trying to find a facility in my local area that provides that access and the building I went to get my ID cards. Again, luckily I was walking around looking for opportunities to adapt to learn and grow and not make a complete waste of my trips up there. And there happened to be a door that said on the side of the door, a classified system cafe, like office cafe, like an internet cafe, but for this classified internet system or whatever, I was like, great. Maybe I can get access to this system instead of having to, you know, fly out to other places to get access. So I start asking around. And again, I get met with just a, a mental laziness that has been taking over this country for quite some time now, but it's still, it never ceases to amaze me and annoy me at the same time. I I talked to three people in a row that I asked them, what do you know? You know, do you know anything about this classified system office? Are there any POCs, points of contact I could talk to who might know anything about getting access to this, all this stuff, anything. And I was all, all I got response was no, I don't. And then if I didn't say anything back to them, they would have just put their head right back down in the sand, fiddling with their peepees, and that would have been it. And a lot again, luckily I wasn't getting frustrated. I took the deep breath, I detached my emotions, and I just asked some some key follow up questions about what what department they work in. What department do they think might be in charge of that? Okay, do you know anybody in that department? Do you know where that office space is for that department? And I was able to get to the next the next, you know, ring in the runaround circle that I was being put on. And that happened two more times with two more people that didn't know shit and actually didn't know enough to get me to the next to progress in the in the whole, you know, maze but if i didn't pry out of them nothing would have happened and these are members of the military mind you now yeah the reserve or national guard or whatever so weekend warriors maybe it's a little different i don't know but they're members of the military and they're not new they've been around based on their rank they've been around for a little bit so there's no excuse 
for the gross laziness and incompetence of these people. But I didn't train them. I have no, I've never worked with them. I don't know what's going on in their lives or in their heads or in their days. What? I don't know what's below the iceberg, underneath the water, whatever you want to call it, whatever the saying is. So instead of reaming them out and getting mad at them, I just tried to find ways to get enough information to get to the next step in the, through the maze. Finally, I got to a guy who was very helpful. It was it was almost laughable at this point because I get to a guy who works in the in the office that manages that classified workspace and was hopefully going to help me out. And I asked him, I said, hey, I saw that there was this office here. I'm in the National Guard in a different unit. I was hoping to gain access to this so I don't have to fly home to my unit. What do I, who can I speak to? What do I need to do to get this to sign up and get approved for this? And he goes, Oh, that office right there, there's nothing in there but a couple of desks. We got that approved to be a vault for classified information because it takes a long time for the process to happen. And then we never put computers in there. Um, but we will soon, maybe. Now, I started chuckling because I went through all that trouble to to get to that was seemingly like it needed to be it seemed to be a dead end. And then this guy, God love him, he broke the chain. He broke the chain of incompetence and laziness. And before I can even ask him anything, he just voluntarily provided information of a unit in the area that also has access to these systems that might be able to help me out. And he gave me an address and he gave me a phone number and I even have to ask. And I almost wanted to hug the guy. He made my day like there all is not lost in the world when it comes to competence and, and laziness. So instead of an utter failure and a dead end, now I got contact information. We're moving through the maze. We're moving through the maze, folks. So not mad about that. So then when I got home, I had some time. I was going to go and uh, spray my weeds with the repellent that I got um, that has the little automatic sprayer. You, I'm sure you've all seen those. They sell them everywhere. Lowe's Home Depot. All the places have the automatic sprayer on these things because people are weak mentally, physically, and emotionally because they don't follow the big three and they can't fathom the idea of having to hand spray stuff for an entire you know, landscape yards worth of weeds. It's just too much for them. So they got the automatic sprayer. Well, I used this once before and apparently you it's single use only with these sprayers. Because the thing turns on and it doesn't actually spray anymore. And I thought maybe it was a clog. I thought there was a battery issue. I did everything I could to fix the, to fix the perceived glitch here in the system. But apparently, it's it's got to be some sort of scheme, scam, trickery that goes on with Monsanto and the people who are selling this weed killer is that yeah we're going to give it to them it's going to look cheap because it's going to be $15 for this tub of poison and this automatic sprayer so their lazy asses can go and kill weeds but they're only going to get one single use out of this sprayer now most people will probably spray the entire tub of stuff throughout their yard in that one shot in that one day and be done with it so they won't realize that they have you know that they're getting duped with the single spray option and they have to go and buy a new one anyway but if you are poison frugal poison conscious like I am I want to get the most bang for my buck when it comes to buying weed poison. I'm not using all that stuff. I'm using, I'm targeting the weed directly at the root. I'm giving it enough spray to be lethal. And then I'm moving on to the next weed. I don't care how long it takes me. I am not 
egregiously spraying my entire yard with poison and wasting all that poison. So I obviously had leftover. Okay. In fact, I had half a tub's worth. So I was going to use that for another session. And what did you know it? The sprayer doesn't work. And guess what, folks? It's not just the weed poison. It's the bug repellent poison, too. Because I have a tub of, it looks the same exact thing. One is for weeds. One is for pests, like roaches and what have you. Because you know my war with the roaches. And that is single use only as well. It turns on. You can hear it on. And the motor's motor's motoring, but it's not sucking up any repellent, and there's no clogs whatsoever in the hosiery or the pipes or what have you. Now, instead, what I wanted to do was I wanted to throw those tubs in the middle of the road and then set them on fire and burn the whole the whole community to the ground. But I didn't. I simply stepped to a contingency plan I adapted and and I certainly wasn't going to go buy new batches of that stuff because that's what they want, right? That's what they want you to do. They want you to go spend $15 on new batches because, hey, it's just $15. It's not that much, but you're paying double because they're scamming us. I found a pack of three hand sprayers with the with the bottle attachment so that I can fill up with poisons and hand spray for bugs and hand spray for weeds. And that pack was for only $4. So that was a big win for me. Not only did I not burn the neighborhood down, I beat the system. I beat Monsanto and I beat Home Depot, and I beat Lowe's for all that little money-making scheme that they got running going on there, trying to get you to double pay for poison. Not happening over here. We got the victory here. And guess what? Weeds are dead. Roaches are dead. Everything is going great in that department now, all because I didn't let my emotions take over, and I didn't uh, burn the place down. Now... Thinking back, maybe I should have. Because I went outside yesterday. First, to go ch- uh, check the mail and then for a morning run. And I look over in my front yard. And in my front yard, I have some landscaping stuff done that was done before I bought the house. One of them is. It's um, a circle in the middle of the yard of landscaping blocks with, you know, mulch and plants in the middle of that, like a planter. That's something that they built with these landscaping blocks. I don't know what they're called, cinder blocks, but they're the landscaping version, so they're artistic looking. Well, somebody stole some of them. I had a semicircle of of my landscaping artwork or whatever you want to call it. My planter is half as big now because they stole about six or seven blocks. I don't know who, I don't know when, but they're gone. Now, I wanted to go on a rampage, not because they were stolen from me. I don't care. In fact, I'm getting ready to remove that damn thing anyway. It's a pain in the ass to mow around. All it has is a couple of stupid bushes in there and some mulch. And so I'm I'm trying to kill weeds for bushes. Any plant, here's a, here's my take on plants. My quick hot take on plants. Any plant, I might have said this before, that does not produce a fruit or a vegetable for me is a useless plant to me. I don't want it in my yard. I don't want to spend money buying it. I don't want to spend time and effort and sweat and blood growing it and cultivating it. I don't care how it looks at the end. I don't want to deal with it. In fact, 
I'm thinking about removing all the landscaping stuff around my house that's creating all that work for no for no fruit or veg. And the previous owner of the house did a lot of work to put that stuff in there. We got flower beds, we got these vines, and all this other bullshit that's just work and it doesn't it produces nothing for me. Absolutely nothing for me personally. If I had a smoking hot wife or girlfriend that liked the stuff, yeah, I would keep it. But I don't, so I won't. So I don't even care about the blocks are gone. I wanted to go scorch earth on the neighborhood just to just to send a message, no matter what it is, no matter how important or unimportant it is, if it's mine and you try to steal it, you're going down for it. I don't care if you were stealing shit from my toilet. No, I obviously don't want the shit. I'm about to flush it, but that's my shit. And if you think you're going to come in and steal my shit and just get away with it scot-free, you got another thing coming, pal. Because I don't care if it's I catch you in the act. I don't care if it's tomorrow or a week from now or a year from now or a century from now. If I'm still alive, I will not stop until you're taken down, until revenge is served. So if you're listening out there, I I dare you to come back. I dare you to come back. But even if you don't, I promise you, I will find you. I will exact my revenge on you. And you will rue the day you decided to steal the least important thing in my house. That's what's going to be the best for me. That's what's going to be the most satisfying for me is that you're have you're going to have to deal with the consequences of your actions over landscaping cinder blocks that I'm going to be getting rid of anyway. If you just waited a little bit longer, they would have been on my sidewalk with a sign that says free, please take. But because you stepped onto my property and you stole it, and I'm looking right at you, whoever you are, and you stole them from me, you will never, ever regret anything more. And I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you have to go through this now. But... You made your flower bed, and now you have to sleep in it, buddy, because I'm coming for you. Now, I could have gotten mad. I could have called the police and had them waste their time pretending to make an effort just to shut me up. I could have cried and bitched and moaned about it. But instead, I, I went for my run. I cooled off. Got the endorphins rushing by getting some exercise in, big three. And now I can devise a plan to get justice appropriately without being emotional about it. And I can move on. I don't need to get any, I don't need to get angry or incapacitated about the, the loss of these cinder blocks that I was going to get rid of anyway. I'm certainly not going to go buy new ones to replace them. If that's what they're thinking, then I'm going to buy new ones for them to buy, to steal more. Nope. I'm just going to let that person know that they made a mistake. And then they're going to learn a lesson too. That's what we're doing here. Okay. So instead of me bitching and moaning and crying and getting the cops involved and getting the neighbors involved and ruining everybody else's day about it, I am going to create an opportunity for this person to learn a lesson. That's all we're going to do here at the LPDS. We're going to we're going to teach lessons, okay? And that's that's what this show is about. It's the show that talks about nothing but finds a lesson in everything. And that guy or gal or whatever 
is going to learn a lesson and they're going to be better for it. I'm not going to kill them. Let's relax. They're not going to be hurt or dead. They're going to learn a lesson. They're going to learn a lesson about how their every choice has a consequence. They're going to learn a lesson about the implications of regret and how how much they you shouldn't want to regret something. How tough that is. They're going to learn a lot of lessons and it's going to be great. We're all going to learn and grow and improve together. Okay. Why are you stealing these to begin with? What are you doing? And you're like, this is like fun with Dick and Jane, the Jim Carrey movie. And Taya Leone, she's a babe. She was in Family Man with Nick Cage. Whoa. But in fun of Dick and Jane, with Dick and Jane, they were poor, but they wanted to keep the 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 facade up, the show, that they weren't poor. So they were stealing other people's landscaping stuff to make sure that they put it in their yard so that it looks like they still had it going on. So maybe that's what's going on here. These people were hurting for cash and they, they didn't want anyone to know about it. So they're stealing landscaping to make their house look better. I don't know. Here's the thing. Just knock on my door and ask. I hate the stupid crap in my yard, in my front yard. I want it gone. I want fresh. I want an entire open front yard of grass that I can mow easily and I can look, it looks good. And this landscaping architecture and planters all over the place are problematic for me. They don't allow me to get that yard that I want. I don't care if other people think they look nice. Do it on your property then. I don't give a shit. I want it gone. So all you had to do is ask. And I might bait the guy. I didn't put a little sign out there. It just says, hey, you don't have to steal these. Just ask and I'll help you with them. Maybe that'll bring him in so I could teach him a lesson. And then he can also get cinder blocks out of it. And it's a double win, triple win. I get my revenge. He gets a lesson and he gets his cinder blocks and I get him off my property. Quadruple win. What are we doing here? So that's been my week of the big man upstairs in red, Santa Claus, testing me to see how I would react to obstacles, hurdles, strife, adversity, whatever you want to call it. And I think we did an okay job of seeing these as opportunities to learn, grow, and improve as opposed to dead ends or problems that are going to incapacitate us. And that is the lesson for everybody out there. No matter how angry you get, no matter how sad you get, no matter how emotional you get in a certain you know specific moment in time, don't let the emotions get the best of you. Use those opportunities to learn and grow and improve and get better. And uh, you'll be better off for it. That's all I got today, folks. Before we go, the big three. For the new folks out there, if there are any. It's the three pillars to staying strong and being a better, happier, kinder, more genuine, healthier human being in life and to spread that positivity and goodness all around you. Number one, exercise every day, whatever it is, whether it's a physical, mental, or emotional exercise, do one thing every day to exercise and get healthier physically, mentally, and emotionally. Number two, don't be a shitty person. Be a good person. Be a kind person. When the opportunity arises to be shitty to somebody or to respond negatively towards somebody, even if they're being an asshole and shitty themselves, detach from your emotions and just omit yourself from the situation. Just don't even respond. And just by that simple act of inaction... You're minimizing the negativity and the shit in that situation and in the world around you, in your environment. Now you have, now your brain space, your environment around you is less filled with negativity and more open free space to fill that with positivity and productivity. So do that. Number three, the most important one, be genuinely thankful and grateful for all the good you have in your lives. 
just think about one thing each day that's good in your life and then think about what your life would be like without that thing. Because you never know when it's all going to go away. When you lose a friend or a loved one, your house gets burned down, floods, you lose it all, you lose your own life. You know, you never know. You never know. And it sounds morbid and dark and sad, and people want to don't want to think about those negative feelings, and I get it. But it'll immediately put you in the state of gratitude so that you don't take things for granted as much anymore. And you can and you can start actually being thankful and grateful for the good in your lives. And if you couple that with not being a shitty person, and if you couple that with exercising every day and being healthier physically, mentally, emotionally, I promise you, I promise you, you're going to be a better, happier, kinder, healthier, more genuine human being. You can spread that goodness throughout the land. Now that's all I got. Thank you guys for listening and for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the hotline, 202-670-1114. Like and subscribe and put your notifications on and tell your friends and enemies. Episode 175 in the books. We average about 40 listeners and viewers per episode every week for the past three and a half years or however long we've been doing this for the past 175 episodes. It's it's been incredible. It's been uh, impressive how wildly unpopular and consistently unpopular this is and how we still going strong within the junction. And I love you guys for it. So thank you guys again. I love you all. Stay strong.